Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word on praise and worship. We really do want to understand and be true, authentic praisers and, and worshipers, God. We thank you right now, God, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you that the presence of God is with us. And now we can go into the holies of holies, God, for ourselves. We have access to your presence. We can go before the presence of God and seek your face, God, in your hands. We can go, God, in the presence of God and hear from you, and you still speak to us. Yes. God, we're thankful that we serve a living God, a, a God who is alive, and, and a God who is active in the affairs of man, who would allow you to be. Yes. So we thank you right now, Father. As we study your word, we know the Holy Spirit is here with us. And the Holy Spirit is here to guide us and to direct us in the way that we should go in your word. So God, speak to us. Anoint our ears that we can hear and our eyes that we may see. So God, we thank you right now for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And John, the scripture from last week in John 4, 23 through 24, the scripture says, and we know that Jesus was talking to the woman, at, the Samaritan woman at the well. And he was, and in John, I won't read that whole chapter this morning, but in John 4, 23 and 24, we'll, go, we'll start there. Because we talked about the history and the background of that on the previous two weeks. But it says the hour coming, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And on last week, we, didn't, we, we, we uh, discovered and we talked about uh, that they gave some history of praise and worship. But several points came out of the last two weeks of this topic here that we were talking about. Number one, we said that true worship uh, is a spiritual condition and it's not a place. It is a spiritual condition and not a place. Jesus dealt with the woman at the well with this issue. And we said that worship is a matter of the heart. It's, a, it's an internal thing. True worship is an internal thing. It's, it's, it's a matter of, of, of the heart. And we establish the fact that we must worship God in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> but as we move forward and talk about praise and worship, I want to give emphasis a little bit to 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. And the scripture says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who call you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Now let's look at what Peter is saying here as we prepare to talk about praise and worship because this scripture is key to what we're talking about today. First of all, Peter said that we are a chosen generation. In other words, another translation said we are a special people. A people who, who are chosen by God, the very elect of God. We are a new race, a people uh, upon this earth. We are a new race of people upon this earth. By the Spirit of God, we have a new mind and a new spirit. So we are very special people as God's chosen people. We are his chosen people. We are very special. So, so Peter says here, but you are a chosen generation. And then he says you are a royal priesthood. And as a priest, we gave some history of the priest, but as a priesthood, we know now that we can go into the presence of God. In the Old Testament, the high priest could only go into the holies of holies, into the presence of God, and offer sacrifices for the sins of the people once a year. But now we can go into the holies of holies. The Bible said we can come boldly now before the throne of grace. In other words, we all have access to God. We all can come into the presence of God. You don't have to wait on the pastor to come into the presence of God. You don't need uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes to come into the presence of the Lord. You don't need anybody. You can go now on your own into the presence of God because you are the priesthood of God. So Peter says you are a royal priesthood. You know, a royal priesthood. You can now go into the presence of God. And then it says you are a holy nation. You are a holy nation. You are a nation. He's talking about us. We are a nation of people. A nation of people that God has choose, chosen. And, and, and this nation uh, makeup is of all races and all colors, regardless of where you're from, from Africa to, to Asia to Russia to, to the United States. He says that we are a holy 
nation. Who are we? A holy nation of people. We are the people of God. We are the people of God. You know, we are chosen. We are the royal priest. Listen to myself. I'm glad I know who I am. Listen to myself. You are a priest. But we know Jesus is the high priest. But well, you are high priest. You are Jesus, high priest. But you are a priest because you can now go into the presence of God. So you are a royal priesthood. Now you are a holy nation. And then he didn't stop there. And Peter said, "You are a peculiar people." Now some people look at and say, "Y'all are strange." No, I ain't talking about we are strange. When you look at that word, it means a people of God's own possession. In other words, we are peculiar people. We're not strange. We may seem strange to the world because we're different from the world. Amen. But we are a peculiar people. Which means we are God's own possession. Amen. God possess us. So the scripture tells us this, who we are. We're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. And we're a peculiar people. We, we are God's people. We, we belong to God. We are the body of Christ. God owns us. We are his priests here in the earth. Amen. But Peter didn't stop there. And it says, in other words, now that you know who you are, he said, this is what you should do. He says that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into what? The marvelous light. Peter said now, pretty much, now that you know who you are, that you are special, that you are a holy nation, that you are God's own possession, you are the elect of God. Now that you know who you are, you should be excited and show forth his praises. Praise means we're going to speak forth that God, the goodness of God. So now that we know who we are, Peter says, now you've got to show forth the praises of God who called us out of darkness. One time we were in darkness, amen? But now we're in the light. But Peter says, now you've got to praise him, in other words. What it means to show forth praises? In other words, it means to speak out, to speak forth, to tell out, to publish abroad, to speak out about something. To make something known. To make known what? The goodness of God. Yes. To make known what? The mercies of God. Yes. So when we give praises to God, we're, we're, we're speaking out. We're, we're making known the goodness of God. Yes. Look at somebody and say, God is good. Then look at him again and say, you got to speak it out. You got to tell somebody. We got to tell one another that God is good. Yes. When somebody comes through those doors, they may need to hear, God is good. Yes. Even if you don't tell them directly, when they see the praise and worship, and they see your hands lifted, and they, and they see that you're, you're, you're singing praises unto God and how good He is, yes. you are speaking forth the goodness of God. Yes. Look at somebody and say, God wants us to praise Him. Yes. He wants us to praise Him. He wants us to speak out the, uh, the virtues of God, His excellencies, and, and the supreme qualities of God. He wants us to speak about Him. And, and I read the scripture before we got started this morning, before praise and worship, He wants us to magnify yes. Him. And we praise God, we're magnifying God. We're speaking out. It's like if you had a, uh, went to a good restaurant and you got some good food. I'm going to have to come on y'all level now since y'all just had Thanksgiving. I'm going to come down on your level. You go to a restaurant and they have some good food. What do you tell folks, man? You need to go over to that restaurant over there. Why, man? They got some good food over there. They got some pig feet over there, man. You never had in your life. That pork chops over there, man, you need to taste those pork chops over there. And we speak out about that restaurant. And guess what happens to that restaurant? The business begins to boom. Why? Because you spoke out. That person tried it, and then they spoke out. Then another person tried it, and then they spoke out. Oh, how good the food was. But this is what this scripture is talking about. We got to speak out the praises of God and how excellent God is. We got to say God is good. And then the next person say he sure is. And then they go tell somebody God is good. The next person tell somebody God is good. Before you know it, you got a praise and worship service going on. And everybody said how good God is. Because God is good. That's what it means to praise him. That's what it means to exalt him. To speak him out. Peter says here to, to, to sing, to, to show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into what? The marvelous light. I want to talk about now the distinction between praise and worship. We spend a lot of time on worship, but now we want to spend some time on praise. Praise is a gateway to express thanksgiving and enter into the courts of God's presence. I'll say it again. Praise is a gateway to express thanksgiving. 
and enter into God's presence. Worship carries us beyond thanksgiving and praise. We worship God for who he is. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is how we live, our relationship with Christ. But we praise God for what he has done, for the deeds of what he has done, his marvelous act. We praise him. But praise is never silent. Worship could be silent. Because you can worship God anywhere. You can worship God anywhere. We established that last week. You can worship God in your home. You can worship God by yourself. When you're serving, you're worshiping God. When you're serving others, you're worshiping God. When you're being obedient to God's word, you're worshiping God. That's worship. That can be silent. But praise can never be silent. You can't keep praise silent. It is always vocal, audible, and public. Praise is a celebration of God. It's what praise is. Praise, praise means we're celebrating God for who he is, his greatness. He is the great creator. We celebrate him. He is our savior. We celebrate him. He is our healer. We celebrate him. He has restored our lives. We celebrate him. He is God. He's coming back again so we can celebrate God. That's what it means to worship him. Look at somebody say, it's a big celebration. <laughs> so when we come to church, when we come to church, what are we doing? We had a big celebration party. Amen. We all been worshiping God all week. Because worship doesn't begin on Sunday. Worship doesn't begin with praise and worship service. Worship begins every day. When you leave these doors, worship begins. When you until now, when you come back next Sunday, worship is continuously. It's going on every day. So when you get here on Sunday, we're just having a party. We're just having a celebration of who God is. Out of our worship, our true relationship with him, we're able to worship him. We're able to praise him. Because that's the distinction between praise and worship. Let's go to the book of Psalm 100, very, very familiar scripture. You all can quote this one per baby. Psalm 100. Look what the Bible says here. And I'll read it. It says, make a what? Joyful noise. Make a solid noise. Joyful. Make a what? Joyful. Joyful noise unto the Lord. What? All ye land. Now, a lot of people use this one when they sing it in the choir and can't sing. They say, well, God said make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's not what we're talking about here this morning. Now, you can make a joyful noise to the Lord, to the Lord all by yourself. Yeah. Amen? But the Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye what? Land. Make a joyful noise. In other words, it's not a silent thing. Praise is not silent. It's not a silent thing. When you say praise the Lord, you're exalting the name of Jesus. When we come together, somebody say, praise God. Praise, praise the Lord God Almighty. You're exhorting his name here on earth. You're exhorting his name here on earth. Then it says, serve the Lord with what? Gladness. gladness. Serve him with gladness. How we serve God is a part of worship. Serve him what? With gladness. We've got to serve him. Worship means our attitude has to be right. We've got to serve him with what? Gladness. And then it says again, Come before his what? Presence. Presence. With what? Singing. singing. That's why we sing. That's why we sing in church. We come before his presence with singing. That's why we lift our hands. That's why we open our mouth. Because we come. God wants us to come into his presence with singing. He wants us to make a joyful noise unto him. To exhort his name. I believe in one day that, that, that the praise, that, that the musicians, we're going to have so many musicians and, and praise leaders. When we have praise and worship service, folks in the community are going to hear. Amen. And they're going to hear us praising God. Yes. They're going to hear us praising God and worshiping God. They're going to hear the instruments and, and they're going to hear the voices lifting up the name of God. Mm. Exhorting his name. Yeah. And many will say, man, I want to go over there and be a part of that service. Yeah. Because they know how to praise God. And exhort his name. So the Bible says, Serve the Lord God has come before his presence with singing. <coughs> know ye that the Lord, he is what? God. To be true worshipers and to praise God, we got to know who he is. Amen. Know that the Lord thou God, it is he that is God. It is he that hath made us and we not ourselves. Yes. And we are his people. Yes. And what? The sheep. Of his passion. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Aren't you glad you're his sheep this morning? Yeah. Praise God. Somebody put your hands together and give a praise. Aren't you glad that you're his sheep this morning? Amen. Here we go again, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with what? Praise. praise.
Be thankful unto him. And what? Bless his name. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. When we come into the presence of God, we come with thanksgiving. Thankful for what he has done. Enter into his, his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with what? Praising him. Praising God as we come into his presence. Thanking him and praising God. And be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. And his truth, what? Endure to all generations. So we got to know who God is. And we got to know who we are when we worship God. Psalms 150, another very uh, familiar passage of scriptures that we all probably mem memorize. So very, Psalm 150 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his what? His mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpet. Praise him according to his what? Excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the string what? Instruments and organs. That's why you have instruments in church. That's why the musicians playing music. It's a part of worship. It's a part of worship service to enhance the services. And it says, praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has what? Breath. Praise ye the Lord. The Bible says what? That everything that have what? Breath. breath. Praise ye the Lord. the Lord. So the scripture encourages us to praise him. To sing unto the Lord. To lift our hands. To open our mouths. When we have the musicians to play. It's all a part of what? A praise and worship. Giving God the glory. We worship him and we praise him with our own mouth. With our hands. We lift our hands. We speak out the goodness of God. That's what it means to praise him. Praise also is, is commending. To commend someone is to entrust someone for care. Or to recommend as worthy. Is he worthy? Yes, he is. Let somebody say he's worthy this morning. He's he's worthy. Worthy. He is worthy this morning. Amen. Let everything that have breath praise him. Because why? He is worthy this morning. To praise God is to praise him formally or officially. Let's go to Psalms 20 and 7. Psalm 20 and 7. Let's go to that scripture this morning. Psalms 20 and 7. Look what the Bible says here. We got to trust God. We praise him because we trust him. It says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we remember the name of the Lord our God. So in other words, we don't put our trust in just anything, any worldly thing. But we remember who? God. So we praise our God. Praise is an ex in a, it's expressing approval or favorable judgment. We have a favorable opinion or to esteem God. When we praise God, we have a favorable opinion about Him. We praise Him. Amen? We have a favorable opinion about Him. Do y'all believe that God is good? Yes. Do you believe that God is great? Yes. Is He awesome? Yes. Somebody stand up and give God some praise. Yes. If y'all stand up and give God some praise. Yes. He's worthy to be praised. Yes. He's worthy to be praised. See, I'm worshiping him and praising him even as I speak. I'm struggling this morning, even, even talking. I guess you can see that. But I'm going to praise him anyhow. Amen. I'm going to worship him anyhow. Even though my voice is trying to leave me, but I'm going to worship him and praise him anyhow. God is good. And he's worthy of the praise. And he's worthy of the glory. Praise is to glorify God. To bestow honor, praise, and admiration. Psalms 34 and 8 says this. I love this. Verse. Psalm 34 and 8 says this. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. Blessed is the man that what? Trust in him. Oh, taste and see. The Bible says that who? The Lord is good. And blessed is the man that trusts in him. I want to give you a couple of names, Hebrew words for the word praise. A couple of words here. The first one is Tehillah. 
Tehillah, T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H, Tehillah. It means to sing a spiritual song. So what we're doing is in line with the scriptures. When we sing a song to God. When you see the praise leaders up here singing, it's in line with the word of God. We sing praises. Why do we do that? Because God wants us to sing praises unto him. So to him I mean to sing praises, to sing spiritual songs. That's what the church has got singing from the hymn books. Because to him it means to sing a spiritual song. Another Hebrew word for praise is Shabbat. It means to speak in a high manner, to proclaim in a loud tone, and to not be ashamed. Listen, somebody say Shabbat. Shabbat. That word means to speak in a high manner. You're speaking highly of God. You're speaking highly of God. You know, you, 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 you're kind of uh, proclaiming with a loud voice that God is good. So when we have a praise and worship service, somebody say, God is good. What are you doing? You're Shabbat. They call it Shabbat because you speak out loudly yes. about God. Another Hebrew word for praise is Yada. Yada. Y A D A H. It means to lift or to thrust the hands up in a public expression of praise. So we lift our hands. God wants us sometimes to use our bodies. He just lift our hands. You see us doing this praise you, God. I, I, I worship you, God. I mean, that, that, that's, that's why. Uh, uh, Yahweh means to lift your hands and to praise him. We don't have time to study the tabernacle of David this morning, but you got to go back and, and read 1 Chronicles, the 16th chapter. David had all of these ministries in the tabernacle. They lift hands. They were singing to the Lord. They would clap their hands. He had a ministry for each one. He had a ministry for just folks of thanking God. All in the tabernacle. And that's why you hear people say, in this time, we got to restore the tabernacle of David back into the church. What people are saying is, we got to restore that true worship and praise back into the house of God. We, gotta, we, we just got to lift our hands and begin to praise him and to begin to worship him. That's what that word means, Yada. It means to lift our hand. Zamar, Z-A-M-A-R. It means to skillfully play a string instrument. Psalm tells us that, that to worship him with the string instruments. Yeah. It means to, to worship him. When you see the musicians playing their music, it means that they're, they're, they're worshiping God through the instruments. David had the instruments in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Moses, the tabernacle of Moses didn't have that, but the tabernacle of David did. So David had music, excellent music mm -hmm. in the tabernacle. Excellent music in the tabernacle. So that's what that word means, Zabah. And Barak means to, to kneel down and to bow before the Lord. So when we have worship and, and when we have praise, you may see somebody kneeling down, bowing down to God. That is an expression of our worship. Listen, somebody said we express our worship that way. So if, I, if you come in and you see us lifting our hand, you see us singing, if you see us somebody kneeling down, that's just an expression of our praise and worship to God. Mm -hmm. We express our, our, our praise and, and worship unto Him. Yes. Another translation, another uh, Hebrew word is uh, Tuda, T-O-W-D-A-H. It's also translated sacrifice of praise. This word carries over to the New Testament in Hebrew 13 and 15. Let's go to Hebrew 13 and 15 if you have your Bibles. Look at somebody say sacrificial praise. Sacrificial. You know what that means? It means you're praising when you don't feel like it. Mm. It means you praise Him when you had a bad day. Mm. It means you praise Him when you're sick in your body. Mm. It means you praise Him when, 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 when you had trials and tribulations, you still praise Him. Yes. If you lost a loved one, you still praise Him. Yes. If you lost your job, you still praise Him. Yes. If you lost your home, you still praise Him. Yes. That's what a sacrificial praise means. It means that we praise God regardless of what's going on in our life. We praise Him when things are going good. Yes. And we praise Him when things are not going so good. Mm -hmm. That's what a sacrificial praise is. In Hebrews 13 and 15, I'm sorry, Hebrews 13 and 15, it says this. By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continuously. And it says here, that is the fruit of our lips, given what? Thanks to His name. The fruit of our lips, 
giving thanks to his name. So a sacrificial praise. In other words, like I just said, regardless of what is happening in our life, a sacrificial praise is we give God praise. Yes. We give God praise. See, I'm praising God now. Yes. I'm worshiping him now. Struggling, trying to speak to you all. But I'm praising and I'm worshiping God Amen. right now. Amen. Because I'm going to continue. That's what praise is. Mm -hmm. It is a sacrificial praise. Mm -hmm. When we had a bad day, we come to church anyway. And we do what? We praise God. Mm -hmm. When we're sick in our body, what do we do? We praise God and say, God, you are here. Amen. Knowing that you're sick in your body. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have lost your job. You say, God, you are Jehovah Jireh. Mm -hmm. You are provider. Yes. You don't have money to pay your bills. God, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. You're giving God a sacrificial praise. Yes. You didn't feel like coming to church today. But you came anyway. Amen. And you gave God praise. Amen. That's a sacrificial praise. You didn't feel well in your body. But that's a sacrificial praise. You're making a sacrifice to give God praise. Yeah. Look at somebody saying, God loves those kind of praises. God loves those kind of praises. It's easy to praise God when we feel good, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, somebody just got paid, just got a lot of money, and that's got, I mean, whatever happened in life, whatever, they just got married, whatever, they just, whatever happened, they can come and give God praise. Yeah. You know? I see couples come in and just got married. Oh, praise God in six months. You're like, what happened to the praise? <laughs> What's the praise? But you praise God when things are going well, and you praise Him when they're not going so good. That's why a sacrificial praise. So when we come to church, look, someone say it's not about us. It's about God. When I walk those doors, it's not about me. It's not about what I've been through. It's not about what I'm going through. It's about giving God the praise that is due to His name. To worship him, to open up my lips and say, God, you are good, regardless of what the world is saying. God, you still exist and you still on the throne, regardless of what they're saying in the world. We praise him. We praise him. We had a bad day on our job. God, I give you praise. I give you praise. I exhort your name. You're still God. Regardless of what I'm going through, God, you're still God. You're the awesome God. That's what God wants from us. Praise. You know another thing that praise, what praise and worship does in your life? It triggers miracles. When you can praise him and you can worship him and regardless of the situation, it triggers miracles in your life. Because you're speaking the goodness of God and also you're talking to the enemy. Enemy, you have been defeated. God is good. God has my back. And I praise him for that. Why? Because he's God. It may not look like I'm winning, but I have victory. Why? Because he is God. Yeah. It may look like I'm alone, but I'm not. Why? Because he is God. He said he'll never what, leave me nor forsake me. And then I can give him praise. God, I thank you that you are with me even in the tough times. And I thank you that you're with me in the good times. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. That's what a sacrificial praise means. We may not feel like coming to church, but guess what? I'm going to come anyway. And I'm going to give God praise. Hallelujah. I may not feel like it in my body, but I'm going to lift my hands. <coughs> open my mouth. Yeah. And I'm going to give God praise. Because yeah. he wants us to exhort him publicly as well. <laughs> to let people know God is good. Listen to myself, still on the winning team. Still on the winning team. Come on, put your hands together and give him praise. I've got about three minutes. I've got to finish this up. Some expressions of praise. I may not finish these off. But some of the ways that we express our praise to God, we talk about singing. We don't have to go to the scriptures and, and Psalms 102. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. We lift our hands and we stand. That's another way. I know that expression. Sometimes when we do praise worship, what do we do? We stand and we lift our hands. That's an expression of worship. That's an expression of praise. That's what it is. The Bible says in Psalms 134. Let's go there. Psalms 134. The Bible says in Psalms 134. It says, Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. By, which by night stand in what? The house of the Lord. Lift up what? Your hands in the sanctuary. And what? And bless the Lord. For the Lord made the earth bless thee out of uh, Zion. For the Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. So we lift our hands. We stand. You see us in a place where we're standing. Why? Because we're expressing our worship to God. We're lifting our hands. Why? Because we're expressing our worship to God. We're singing to the Lord. We're using our mouth. Why? Because we're expressing our worship and praise to God. 
When my regular scripture last week in Romans, the Bible said, present your bodies as what? A living sacrifice. That means your hands. That means your mouth. A living sacrifice. To give God praise. To give him glory. We, we, we shout and we clap our hands. The Bible says in Psalms 47 and 1, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I remember when I was growing up back in, in, in the Pentecostal Holy Church that I grew up in. We had a deacon that when he got happy, he would just shout. He would just shout. I'm not talking about the dance shout. I'm talking about with his mouth. He would just cry out to the Lord and just, and just shout. So we clap our hands. We shout. We kneel. We play instruments. We dance. We do all those things. All those things is an expression of worship. An expression of worship. And then I want to end on this one. i got about two minutes here. Let somebody say Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Why this Thanksgiving? The Greek word is, is uh, charis. C-H-A-R-I-S. Charis. It is the root for English word charismatic. And is related to the word for grace and thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, what it is, is an, an appropriate response to God's grace. Thanksgiving is an appropriate response to God's grace. Thanks is an expression of gratefulness and appreciation to the giver of all things, who is God. Unthankfulness is a sign of the end times. The more unthankfulness you see, the closer you're getting to the end times. But thankfulness is an expression of God's faithfulness. We live in a world today that they don't, they don't express their, their, their thanks to God anymore. They're not grateful anymore. But we as believers, we express our gratitude and our gratefulness and appreciate God for who and for what he has done for us. Let's look at the book of Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 19. We may have to end there. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 19. I'll end on those scriptures. Let's go there. And it says this. Paul says this to the, to the uh, church at Thessalonica. He says, rejoice what? Yeah. Evermore. He says, 17, pray without what? Ceasing. And then it says in verse 18, in everything, what? Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, what? Concerning you. And then it says, what? Quench not the spirit of God. Or quench not the spirit. So here, Paul encouraged the church to what? To rejoice, to what? To pray, and to what? To give thanks. But he didn't say for everything. He said in everything. We give thanks to God. We thank Him. When we're going through, we give thanks to God. Not for the circumstance, but in the midst of it, we give God thanks. We're thanking God because He is a graceful God. His grace is sufficient for us. So if I'm going through, God, I thank you. Why? Because His grace is sufficient for me. God, I'm sick in my body, but I thank you. Why? Because your grace is sufficient for me. Yeah. Even if you don't hear me, you'll give me the grace to endure it. Right. God, I give you thanks. You lost your job. Why? God, because I know there's a greater job because of your grace. I didn't deserve it, but you got something better for me, God. Why? We give him thanks in the midst of everything. In the midst of everything. I remember years ago when I, when I, when I had lost my mom, and, and my wife had lost my mom, and, and I remember praying, and I, and, I, and I went in the bathroom, and I says, God, I give you thanks. I give you thanks because of your grace. I can endure this because of the grace of God. Paul says, by, by his, in, in, in my witness, I am made strong. God told, Jesus told, God told uh, 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 Paul that in your weakness, I am made strong. My grace is sufficient for you. So we can give God thanks. Whatever's going on in our life, we can give God thanks. Because his grace is sufficient for us. God, I thank you. Because your grace is sufficient. <laughs> Amen. Let's spend this time. I heard again, God, thanks. I'm up here fighting my wars. I don't know what's going on, but I give God thanks this morning because His grace is sufficient. Amen. And because of His grace, I made it through. Somebody give God some praise. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. We understand now what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. We've got to have a relationship with God. 
we gotta have a relationship, an intimate relationship. And worship flows out of our heart. It flows out of our heart. That connection that we have with God. We praise God because for who He is, for His greatness. God is great. God is good. You know, things can be going bad. God is good. Things can be going bad on your job. They can come and say, you know, they can complain. Everybody complaining. Oh, this is going on. The supervisor just said, just say, God is good. God is good. Your family members come to you and they got bad news. Just tell them, God is good. Continue to give them praise. Because it's not based. Our praise is not based on our circumstances. Because if praise was based on our circumstances, it would be authentic praise. It would be authentic worship. Look, somebody say, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with God. It all has to do with God. Let's give him praise.